Hello and welcome to CIS 126. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder, the class is being recorded for playback. Uh, welcome to the class. If you are here uh, continuing the class from CIS 125, uh, we're going to keep going where we last left off, basically, and start to add to our knowledge. If you are new to the class, uh, welcome as well. We're going to get you started up quickly in all of the material very soon. As is day one, however, I need to do a lot of uh, intro things uh, and uh, talk about what the class is, the goals, examples, the syllabus, the first homework, all that good stuff. And then we'll uh, move on with the material very quickly. So the, um, the usual will be that you want to log in to the Zoom. If you come in person, you want to log into the Zoom as well, because I'll be using that as usual in the chat box, asking you questions and then responses and such. Just to make sure all of that's working properly on the chat box, go ahead and just uh, type a quick hello uh, into the chat box, find the Zoom chat box, type a quick hello just to see if it's all working. And um, we're going to use that as usual to um, uh, if I have a question or if you have questions, you can type them into the chat box and uh, we can communicate that way. So, all right, seems to be working great. All right, so the class, let's look at here first. I'm going to look at a few of these items. You can look at them in detail on your own. Uh, but in general, I will do a quick intro to the Canvas stuff. So the... Um, CS 126 is a continuation of the animation class we started in 125 last semester. There's going to be a bit of focus on coding because in this part of the class, it's going to be still drawing and animating and such, but it's also going to be a big focus on creating games, creating interactivity, adding to what you've previously learned about your original characters and backgrounds and all that good stuff, but then now doing some interactivity, some video games. All of the lectures from part one of the class are right there in one handy playlist on YouTube. So if you're new to the class, one of the first things you need to do is check out those videos. Yes, it's a full semester length of videos. Each one ranges between two hours, two and a half hours, one and a half hours. Yeah, if you're new to the class, you need to check out those videos a bit, especially the beginning ones about the software and the uh, basic tools of the app and such. And of course, you can play these fast forwarded, right? YouTube gives you the ability to um, play it on fast speed. You can go over to the settings, speed, and, you know, go all the way up to double speed. And therefore, an hour video becomes 30 minutes long. But the um, the previous semester is all there. If you previously enrolled in CIS 125, uh, you can still go back to Canvas and the videos are and all the material is still there. But if you're brand new to CIS 126, uh, you'll have to go through the, uh, the lectures here on YouTube. This class will run live on Mondays and Wednesdays. So compared to 125 last semester where we met one day a week, this one is two days a week. It's just a shorter time. It's still a six and a half unit class which fit well in a regular semester, 16 weeks. But in the, in the summer, when we've only got nine weeks, um, the uh, meeting times are twice a week, 12 to 2.30. We'll talk about lab time and such. As usual, however, if it's easier to do the class from home, that's fine by me, as long as you do the homework. Uh, I will be broadcasting the class live on Zoom Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, there's the link. It'll be the same link the whole semester. And so starting today, moving forward, if you want to do the class from home, that's fine. Although, of course, if you do the class here in person, this is where we've got the software for free. Here's where we've got the pen tablets. Um, and especially when we get to the game programming part of things, uh, to preview things, we are going to be making games for mobile devices, actual real games for real mobile devices. They could be on computer, too but we're going to focus on mobile devices. Now, the issue is that it is the easiest to do on an Android device. It can still be done on an iPhone, of course, but it's just easier to teach on Android. 
it's just easier to kind of turn on the settings and put your game on directly on Android than iPhone. In the, in the lab here, I've got a class set of Android tablets. I can let you borrow the drawing, the drawing pen tablets and the Android tablets, um, and it'll just be a lot easier to do the work to see your, your games right on a real device. If you wanna use your own device, you could. We'll talk about that when we get to it on an Android phone. It's a little too hard to do it on an iPhone in this lab, but of course it's all, it's all gonna be part of the lecture. We'll see what we mean. But if you want to borrow one of our Android um, game tablets, you can do so in the lab. I cannot check them out for you to take home. Uh, you have to use them in the lab. And so Mondays and Wednesdays is going to be the, the lecture time. There's going to be some amount of lecture. We're scheduled between uh, 12 and 2.30. So maybe we'll do like lecture, maybe depending on the material, 12 to 2.00. 12 to 1.30, 12 to 1.45 or something to give some lab time. We're not officially setting up lab time like we did in the fall where we had other days of the week as well. We, we can only do it within our allocated time here. So depending on all of you, uh, possibly we can add some unofficial lab time between 2.30 and 3 if you want to stay that long. Uh, I think I might be able to do so as a supervisor, possibly the assistants, we'll check with them. But officially the class is 12 to 2.30, some amount of lab time. I mean, some amount of lecture time, a little bit of lab time, but both days, Mondays and Wednesdays are the focus of lecture and then some lab time at the end. Syllabus. Check this on your own in detail, but in general, what I'll say here. Uh, so okay, so on the syllabus. Um, okay, the class goes officially from today, July 3rd to August 1st. So if you take a look at the calendar, it's the full month of June that we will be here Mondays and Wednesdays. And we start in July. Uh, actually, we have a holiday. Uh, Juneteenth is a holiday. June 19th is a holiday. June 19th there. So be aware of that. They will, they will not have class on that day, that Wednesday. So we meet Mondays and Wednesdays but that June 19th will be a holiday in a couple of weeks. And then in July, well, 4th of July is a holiday, but we don't meet on Thursdays, so not a problem for us. And then officially, the class ends on Thursday the 1st, which is weird, uh, officially. But as usual, you will, have, you will still have the time to, uh, to turn in the work at a reasonable time. And like back on part one, uh, the homeworks will be due on Tuesday. So we'll spend Monday and Wednesday to learn the material. Then a deadline will be the following Tuesday. That'll give you a chance to do some lab time on that end of the day Wednesday, some lab time on the end of the day Monday, and then it's due on the following Tuesday. So just like before. Focus of this class is advanced techniques in animation. Uh, but with a big focus on interactivity. So all of this jargon right here might not make sense at the moment. It will make sense as we learn these things. Um, movie clips, object collision detection, interactivity, project flow, variables, symbols, all this stuff will make sense once we do it together. In general, these are the big outcomes of the class. Create a plot flow chart for a video game project, an interactive game with audio and visual, code for event listeners, conditional statements, and more, using the software to create these games, which are compatible on desktop, on mobile devices, Android, iPhone, and then also looking at each other's work to give feedback. Technically, it is not required to take part one, highly recommended, you need equivalent knowledge or to review the lectures of part one.
and also get help from me or the assistants. As usual, attendance and participation, it's not about being here Monday and Wednesday for three hours. It's about doing your work. So if you're able to do the work at your own pace at two in the morning, that's fine, as long as you turn in the uh, assignments by the deadline. If you took part one, uh, you know that there'll be a variety of criteria for every assignment. Every assignment counts. Um, a shorter class like this, there's even less assignments than back on the regular semester, so every assignment counts. Getting zero on assignment is very bad. So late work, obviously, uh, you need to contact me if there's family emergencies or work things and you're going to be late for the assignment. If it's a legitimate excuse, there could be some leeway. And um, otherwise, there are pointed deductions. And so attendance is based on doing the work. Mondays and Wednesdays, and there'll be uh, stuff on Canvas. Just an overview of things, how the week works. Okay, so here's all the assignments. One, two, three, four, five regular assignments and one final project. So the first assignment will be related to uh, drawing and painting, like we learned back on part one with a few more techniques. Uh, part two will be a plot flow chart to plan for a video game. We're going to make a video game is the big idea in this class. Um, your starting project file eventually, your version, you know, 0 0.1 of the project will be submitted. Then a first code check in and a second code check in. Uh, so how are you doing with your code? Turn it in. Um, all of that. And then that adds up to a final project. Basically, we're going to be working on the final project starting next week. Together, little by little, we're going to start to learn all the things we need to learn to make a final project. So it's not like suddenly final project. It will be that you're working on it the whole semester as we are um, as we are learning. That'll be at the end, due at the end, 25 points. That adds up to 100 points in total. Usual there, point deductions for lateness, more late, more point deductions. Um, but if you have legitimate uh, reasons, we can possibly accommodate. Basically, academic integrity, do your own work. Don't steal other people's work and copyrighted material. And uh, don't let the AI chat GPT do it for you. Uh, you know, do your own work, basically. Professional conduct, we are in a school environment, in a professional environment, so we uh, need to uphold standards of college uh, conduct. A student may be removed from class if they um, are uh, a problem. That has never happened in all the years that I've been teaching, uh, but there is the ability to remove students if they need to be removed. On our online communication, we should follow good netiquette, good uh, professional communication. Check that out on, on your own. We have various support services for you, writing labs, tutorings, etc. If you need any accommodations, we're happy to accommodate. Just make sure you submit your, uh, your forms within the first week or two of class uh, so we can give you your accommodations. Emergencies. Uh, if there are emergencies on campus, there's going to be some really loud alarms that go off. Uh, these things right up here, the fire alarms are very loud. We'll definitely know that. And then what we will do is we will order we exit. Oh, last semester, that's all the blur now. But last semester, didn't we have a fire alarm go off? Is that the other semester? Was that two semesters ago? It happened at some point. Two semesters ago. Okay, two semesters ago, uh, we had a fire alarm go off and we all it was very loud and we all went outside and we were safe and so the same thing here if there's anything happening in the uh fire or earthquakes or whatever uh, you know i'll guide us through the disaster and we'll be okay but if you're at home uh check the uh social networks of the college uh, and then they they text us now don't they? they send us messages and tell us the power went out and all of that 
So we've got an emergency plan, no problem. Course map, follow the links in Canvas, check that out on your own, and then a big overview of the semester. So it's obviously half a semester, it's half the length. Instead of 16 weeks, we're 16 or 17 weeks, we've got nine weeks. And so it's gonna go pretty fast, especially if you did not take part one, uh, you have to do some basic catch up on the first two weeks, and then we really have to get going. For those of you that started in 125, coming to 126, it'll feel just like home with an extra day, Wednesdays. But um, this is the overview of things. So this first week, intro for the people that are new, re-intro plus new stuff for those of you that are continuing. Next week, we're going to work on a video game. Now, spoiler alert, it's not that all of you will be able to make a game however you want. That is going to be very difficult to teach uh, the concepts. We're going to learn a bunch of like ingredients to make a game. And together, all of us together, we're going to make a certain game. Now, on the side, I would highly recommend that you're also working on your own idea. I'm going to give you a general idea, and we're all going to work on it together, but that's going to be the ingredients. You can then take those ingredients and make your own amazing idea. The grading will be on the class project, but if you're working on your own idea, that's great. I highly recommend it because you're then applying what you're learning, not just for the classwork, but for your own idea. On week two, we're going to talk about brainstorming on what this game should be, what should it include, you know, what do we want to, what even game do we want, a, a point and click game, a strategy game, a, a, a shoot 'em up game, a puzzle game, whatever, you know, brainstorm. Then figuring out what do we want the game to do, because a game just doesn't happen. You People think about what it needs to do and then make it. Do we need a scoring system? Do we need timers? Do we want secret passageways? Do we need multiple endings? You know, brainstorming. We're going to start to set up the project, uh, which will then take us to setting it up so that we can start to see it on real devices. Very quickly, you're going to start to be able to show off to your friends and family, look at the game I'm making. Here it is right here. Try it. And then eventually, when it's all complete, yeah, this will be a real game that you can publish on the app stores and get rich 99 cents at a time. So it's going to be real games and notice a lot of weeks of coding because a game is like a website uh, made out of code for it, for the pretty buttons to do things. Code has to do its thing. And that's going to be a big focus on this part of the class. Of course, there will still be all the artistry and the drawing and the coloring and the painting and the animating, but lots of coding. And um, let me see quickly here on the chat box, how many of you have ever done any amount of coding? Have you done any HTML coding or JavaScript or something in Unity or what else is there? Blender, et cetera. So tell me in the chat box if you've done any amount of coding in high school or college or on your own or anything, and then just say whatever language it might be. So go ahead and type that. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the uh, at the calendar of events and all of that as a plan of what we're going to be covering this semester. So, so. So um, this is the totality of the class and the um, plan of what we're doing here. There's the one holiday on the 19th, and there's the 4th of July as well. Then suddenly the semester is over. So definitely, as usual, we will need to mind our time and the deadlines. And now in the summer, it's even faster than what we had in the, um, in the whole semester. So uh, no responses here about any coding. Okay, so we're all new to coding. Great. That means that we will all 
be able to be on, oh, there we go, 152. So um, we will all be pretty much on the same boat about uh, learning coding. Um, and I will start from zero. If you didn't have any experience, of course, no problem. That's the whole point of this class. So the uh, there's the syllabus in general. Modules will activate every week. We're on week one, of course. We'll have the welcome. We'll have the resources. We'll have a homework. Not every week we'll have a homework. The first three weeks, we will have a homework every week. And then we're going to do homework every other week or so. And then that uh, will get us to all that we need to learn as we go on. So we'll come here. Just welcome to the class. We're meeting on these days. There's the Zoom. A reminder, current masking social distance guidelines are relaxed at the college. I will provide masks and hand sanitizer if you need it. It's all at the back over there on that computer. If anyone ever needs a mask, it's back there. Sanitizers are all over the place. If you feel sick, no problem. Stay at home. You're not forced to come here and, uh, and struggle while you're sick and so forth. And that's fine. You can stay at home. Um, don't get me sick please, because I have to teach several classes and it's not just that I get sick and I get sick. No, I have, I have to deal with lots of classes. So if you're, if you think you're sick, you're getting sick, stay at home. It's okay. I just follow the deadlines and check out the recordings. Uh, this week, we're looking at the syllabus. We're looking at the software. We're looking at the first, the idea of a model sheet for the game. So more drawing this week. That'll tie into the assignment. I'll show examples from previous semesters. I've taught this class for several semesters. So I'll show examples of previous students' model sheets, their games, et cetera, to give you inspiration and to also give you a goal of what to do better. Live session, all the info about meeting in person or on Zoom. And as usual, here is where I will have any notes, any example code, any example projects, and the recording. resources for this week. All the lectures from part one are put into one spot. This class, of course, focuses on Adobe Animate. And here's the thing. Um, there's many ways to make animation. There's many ways to draw. There's many ways to make a game. And all of them are great. And all of them are bad. It just depends on what you need at the particular point. Let's say you learn to make projects and such in Blender. It's a very popular app, Blender. But let's say you get hired by a company and they don't use Blender. So you're a pro on Blender, but you're in a company that doesn't use Blender. Are you gonna quit or are you gonna learn their software? And usually the software is all very similar. The buttons are gonna be different, the interface and such, but the end result is the same end result, basically. So we're using Adobe Animate like we did back on part one. And animate is amazing because we can draw with it, we can animate with it, we can make video games with it. And so there's many ways to do all of this, but we're continuing with what we learned back on part one. I'm trying to get two guest speakers to come in on one of these days this summer that, that work in the game industry. One has worked for like uh, 15 years in the game industry and one has worked like 30 years. Uh, so I'm trying to get them to see if they can come and be guest speakers and such and talk about their experience in the game industry and maybe even, you know, give them your resume and so forth. But uh, we're going to see about that when that time comes. Uh, possibly we'll have some guest speakers. So you can use the software for free on campus or you can get it at home. There's a student discount. There's the manual for animate plus other links and things and videos and such that I will give you as time goes on. Southwestern resources, check those out for counseling services, DSS services, food insecurity services, housing insecurity services, all of those things that we provide besides classes, all of these social good services. Check that out there. There's a Q&A forum, the Cyber Cafe for extra stuff, and then the wrap-up. 
Here's what we did. Here's what's coming next. Optional stuff. Okay, first homework. Let me give you a preview of it. We've got plenty to learn, of course. Here's the preview. 15 points due next week on Tuesday. I create a model sheet. There's a link there. I'll get to this link in detail in a little bit. From this amazing website that you should browse on a regular basis. But here is a uh, an article on model sheets, and I'll talk about it in detail soon. You're going to make your own model sheet. So project file, dimensions, frame rate, like we've done before, naming it like we've done before. Three layers, one called turnaround, one called expressions, one called colors. So those of you that took part one, you started to create an original character. We're going to expand on that by then turning it into a model sheet where you're going to have different angles of the character. And another layer different expressions of the character and then on another layer the color scheme of the character so if you took part one you have a starting point if you didn't take part one well you're going to learn these things and then you need to do the work there's a video also that you should check out at some point not the Chick-fil-A video, but there's a video here on um, doing um, model sheets. So this is only about four minutes long. It's about looking at what model sheets are, tips and examples and such. And um, check that out on your own. One file, three layers multiple drawings due next week after we learn what we need to learn. Points breakdown. Preview. I'll show examples from previous semesters to give you ideas of what I'm looking for. Then we'll get into the software and such. But any questions at this point, either here or on the chat, any questions so far? Let's do one more thing before we go on attendance and such. Uh, let me call the official roster. Uh, this is the official roster at the moment. And if anyone wants to add the class with an ad code, I can give you an ad code in a moment. Uh, but this is what it, this is the official ad. Uh, this is the official roster I printed half an hour ago. So if you're not on this roster, you're not enrolled. But I can enroll you today. If I mispronounce your name, let me know. John Carmona. Chavez, Mario Garcia, Dusty Rojo, you're at home, say hello there. Oops, I should also be looking at there too. There we go. Um, Aiden Gillum. Gabriel Habdi, Sergio Martinez, Yassidi McDonald, Vera Reyes, Tali Rojas, Sofia Rosal, Elahan Umfress, Sydney Winnett, John Young. All right, if I didn't call your name, I will give you an ad code a little bit later. Um, I think only one, right? You need an ad code. I'll give you an ad code a little bit later to officially enroll. Anyone else? Everyone is here, right? You said hello. You said here on the chat. Good. And I covered everyone. Okay.
Um, all right, so let me show examples last semester um, from a previous semester. So um, So I thought I had that ready. Okay, so let me go back to a previous semester. Two examples of these um, model sheets. the same from people that were in the same boat as you in terms of they were also in the summer. They also um, they also had a limited amount of time. The summer is a lot shorter. And so they were also able to create what they needed to uh, within the time limits. Ready. So uh, we can look at examples here of previous of a previous semester. When the class is live, the um, class is live, the canvas looks different. When it's archived, it looks different too. This is going to be way more annoying than I thought. Um, so from here, I can see, we can see here. So we have here, this is an example of the color model sheet where there's the character. What are the definitions of the various colors that define the character? There's many ways to do this. We'll see some examples. But on this particular one, okay, here's the colors of the character. The hair are these colors. They went to the, uh, they went through the, through the technique of highlights and shadows and so forth. So then this is what the colors are. And then they even define the formulas. You can get the formulas in animate. I'll show you where. That's this is an example of like the highest level of effort. Uh, we'll see different examples in a moment. Um, expressions. So it's expressions. It's the character is just focused on the character, different expressions. I think I put at least three. If you want to make more, that's fine. The different expressions. Sometimes people also write at the bottom. This is normal. This one is happy. This one is mischievous. Turnaround is at least three angles. So how does the character look on front? How does it look on side or three quarter view? How does it look behind? You can do more. How does the character look like from above? Uh, three quarter view back and so forth. And so front view, back view, side view this is a technique people often do that to show the full body, they don't draw a particular limb because it gets in the way. That's a way to do it. This is one example here. This is on se three separate files. I'm going to make it easier. You're going to put it all in one file. Instead of three separate files, you're going to do it in one file, one separate layers. Let's see other examples. Here's one of colors. Okay, so it's their main character. It's colored in. Here's the colors. You don't need to define, here's the ear color, here's the shirt color, and here's the formula. You don't need to go that far. 
I like it. If it's that detail, it's not going to affect your grade. But this is good. This does what I'm looking for. Colors the character, and these are the colors. Turnarounds. Does not have to be fully colorized. It can be all black and white. That's fine. We have the side view, the front view, the back view, at least three views. Expressions. Yeah, so this is the expression of waking up at 6 a.m. This is slightly depressed, stressed. This one is normal. This one is sleeping. So same sort of head shape. This is a technique. We'll see the basic head shape. And then you just kind of change the eyes and mouth a little bit. Although on some of these things like slightly stressed or maybe on why the ears might also be down if you want but this gets the point across different expressions turn around so same idea at least three poses three angles don't need any complex background doesn't need to be colored in although it looks nice that won't affect your grade as usual, I'm grading on the technical aspect of things. Technically, did you do this? Yes or no? Versus um, versus the artistry of it. I can't quite grade on artistry. Uh, for this, I would have preferred just the one focus of the character and then the colors, but they wanted to show they've got a hair tie, so they have to then also show the other angles and say there's also a hair tie color there. Although I, if it's the same color as the coat, I would have written it as just coat slash hair tie and just have the one character instead of the three drawings. And expressions. So they went further than just the faces, a little bit at the top of body as well, because this sort of mischievous look also works well when, when it's the sly turnaround, the shy expression here, how that works with the body language as well of the shoulders. She sketches of it, that's fine, that's nice, that shows your work and such, or you could have a layer where you've got the, your, your, your scratchy sketch, and then on top of that layer is the finished lines, and only have the one lines, that's fine. We're going to see there's a lot of open-endedness to these assignments in lots of the artistry. And then the technical aspects, however, make sure you do the technical aspects. Seeing these variety characters, drawing styles of ways to do these. See here, this is the skin tone, hair tone, lip color. It doesn't need the formula. You know. I didn't remember these, but if I had shown if I had shown the camp one first, that would have been better just to show you as a starting point. And then the next kind of levels of effort with the details. Expressions. A couple more. Stick figures are acceptable in various degrees. Grade-wise, it is because of um, missing some elements and so forth. But for example, if we're working with a document that is HD size, and you put your drawings in the very left corner, you're wasting space. It looks unprofessional. And it doesn't matter that it's stick figures. You can still do interesting things with stick figures. But the uh, back on part one, when we talked about making your characters, no one is really doing stick figures. You're a few levels above that, even if you feel you're kind of basic. Here, if this were to be redone, I would have them do things like, OK, add some more details. Do they wear glasses? Do they have a top hat? Do they have you know, a belt or something? Because stick figures can still be upgraded to be more interesting. And so basic colors, okay, black and white, I guess. So good enough. Then on expressions, 
again, the all that empty space for some reason. And so, yeah, here we have some details about here's how happy looks and mad and annoyed gets the point across. Uh, stick figures elevated because here, the eyebrows. Eyebrows really help with expressions. The um, turnaround, which is just the same as the other one, I think. Yeah, so it's the same as the other one. So kind of a little bit of effort. That's why the grade isn't the best, but not an F. Arounds in black and white work just fine. Then I need to see color examples. So they didn't turn that one in. Wait, there it is, color. Um, right there. So the colors you can define here's the hair color, or you can define here's the formula. So plenty of examples there of uh, model sheets and a variety of characters and styles and we can see people that put a lot of work into it, some with less work. We can see examples of people starting off, examples of people that looks like look like they've been drawing a long time. Wherever you fit in art-wise is fine, as long as you do the details correct. We're uh, getting close to our first break. So let's take our first break here and then we'll get into animate and learn some things. And um, so that we can be able to understand more in detail this first project and learn some techniques and with a focus on the games and such. So it's uh, 12.52. Let's take a break until 1.02, 10 minutes. And when we come back, we'll, we'll get to work. All right, so we're going to continue here. Uh, this first week is uh, to get used to using the software again. I know if you took part one two weeks ago, it might not be too long ago, but you can easily forget things. If you haven't been to part two from part one in a while, you need to get acclimated. And if you're taking part two brand new that you never took part one, then definitely you'll want to acclimate to the software. Uh, I'm going to go more in the speed of you've already taken 125 at some point before, so I'm gonna, not going to do the most basic of things. The most basic things are back on the recordings of part one. Uh, but if any of you that are brand new to the class, of course, again, don't hesitate to ask me for help, the assistants for help. But I, I am going to be skipping the most basic stuff because we've already covered it on a previous semester. Now I'm starting my animate, but it's a little slow on my end. I think we need updates and stuff on these computers, uh, but just give that a moment for it to start up in a moment. And uh, I'm gonna create a brand new document. I'm gonna do a little bit of drawing with a focus on this week's assignment. So you saw that on the previous semester, the assignments are pretty much, the, the things that we learn on the week are pretty much going towards the goal of an assignment then the assignments add up to the final project. Well, ultimately, at the very end, it's going to be a video game. Your video game is going to have a character. Well, you started to make a character on the previous class. Now we need to define more aspects of the character, as we saw there with, uh, with those model sheets. So we're going to do a little bit of practice with the different types of model sheets, with some techniques, new drawing techniques and such, new coloring techniques like gradients, uh, and then other techniques for coloring drop shadows and stuff like that, transparency. And also, we'll do this. Um, I, I pretty much think I know what we're going to cover, but let's do this also in the chat box if you'd like to, 
if you if you want like how do they do that or how do you do that technique or uh, how how is the technique of this or that so requests basically if any of you have requests i saw how to do this kind of drawing or coloring or whatever how do you do that so if you want to at any point put it in the chat box there and we'll see if we can do it um i will be covering a variety of things but if you also have like the requests um, you can put them in the chat I'm going to create a brand new file here. So go up to the file new menu. As we did last semester, the whole time, we're going to work with an HD file, uh, high quality HD. So full HD as usual. Frame rate, we're going to keep that at 24 frames like we did previously. 24 frames is good enough for smooth animation. Uh, more than that is just more difficult to animate. It requires more processing power, better computer, et cetera, but 24 frames will work great. Uh, platform type, no change there, but that should be Action Script 3. So in two weeks at the latest, maybe next week, maybe next Wednesday, but definitely in two weeks, we're gonna do, we're gonna start to do coding. We're going to start to write code to make our game. And the code that we're gonna use is Action Script 3. Now this is related to JavaScript. If any of you have done any web design classes and you worked with JavaScript, Action Script is the cousin of JavaScript. That's the one we're using for the moment and for the various projects for the future. There's no coding at the moment, but we're just going to leave it there. That's what we're going to be used to. These dimensions, basically the whole semester 19, 20, 1080, 24 frames, Action Script 3. Project starts up. What I like to do is I uh, click the zoom to fit in window so you can see everything at once, fit in window. I also like to change my background color instead of pure white. I'm going to go with any other color like a gray. That'll help me differentiate my drawing versus an empty space. So I've zoomed out. I've uh, changed my stage color. I'm going to save. Save as. to use Google Drive, OneDrive, a flash drive, et cetera. If you need help with that, check with uh, check with us. But for the moment, I'm gonna set, save this onto the desktop and you wanna get used to saving your stuff in a folder. There's some weird errors that happen sometimes if you don't save your projects in a folder. So always make sure you make a folder. I'll call this week one, whatever you want. Name whatever you want. We'll call this week one practice. Anything you wish. All right, so um, this is a lot when we get to the games. And basically when we worked on your movie, well, you had a title scene, main action scene, uh, credits scene. When we get to the game, basically everything that we're going to see on screen and interact with should be a scene. And um, it'll make it easier for you to, this part of the game or on the quest, here it is on scene three. And it's obviously better to name your scenes in meaningful ways. So we'll access the scene panel up on the window menu, scene, or shift F2. I've got one scene. Um, for the moment, I want to use scenes for, uh, for the drawings that we're going to do. And the drawings that focus this week are the model sheets. And as I said, we've got three model sheets, turnaround, expressions, and colors. So I'm going to make three scenes, and on each of those scenes will be a focus on those three types. Scene one, I'm going to double click it, call it turnaround. I would recommend to um, name it like this with no spaces. This is going to be important when we talk about code. When we talk about code, it matters if you call something cat versus cat uppercase versus cat lowercase. When we write the code, the um, 
case of it really matters. And then spaces, cute cat. Spaces are also going to matter with the code. They're usually going to be a problem. So it's recommended to keep everything lowercase. But for readability, you could capitalize the letters. So you can keep track of, you can actually read them. So this is going to be turnaround. No space. You layer, or sorry, add scene. Then this one will be expressions. Scene, colors. Three scenes. We have their own one million frames and layers. So we keep track of all of that. We'll start with the turnaround. And for this, we'll create, we'll have two layers. Layer one, layer two. But on layer one, we'll call that sketch. Two, we'll call that finished. Sometimes people call this rough finished or rough and polished, but whatever you want to call them. So there's going to be a layer where it's going to be just quick sketch idea as a starting point, especially poses and such. And then on top of that is going to be um, the more finished to drawing. I'm going to lock the finished layer because it's not finished yet. I'm still sketching. And then that frame one with the any tool, but I'll start with the brush tool. You have a pen tablet, you can use that or the mouse. And I would recommend with any color besides black, black is often like, okay, these are my final lines, my characters finished the final lines. Uh, as the sketch, I would recommend either that default blue color or a red color or any of these uh, just big obvious colors. I think red looks really nice, especially when you've got the simple gray background. Yellow, sometimes people use yellow, but depending on the background, it's hard to see. But I think if we go with a red color, that's pretty visible. Don't go with black yet because that's when the drawing is finished. And what I want to do here is, uh, starting with stick figures, We'll start with a humanoid figure, of course, if you are going to be creating more of a animal figure, four-legged figure, uh, a goblin or a robot or whatever, you'll have to do your own idea. But as a starting point here with, with uh, stick figures. Now, this is, the, this is the full frontal pointing right at you. And remember, I said front side, back side profile. So if I start to draw the profile of my very simple stick figure, well, I have to start to think about it in different ways here. A very simple character is kind of difficult to, to, to think about how does it look in, in different posings. Because then if I do the, the backside, okay, can you tell what's the backside and what's the front side on the stick figure at the moment? Not really. But one is the front, one is the back, one is the side. Now, before I get too much further, I'm doing this the wrong way in terms of consistency. In an animated project and in a game, there is consistency, especially when there's dozens of people working on a project, if not hundreds. And so one person making their drawings in a certain way and it's not consistent with someone else, that's bad. So I'm going to do this over but I'm going to start with consistency. So I'm going to do control A, select all, delete it. We're going to do this better. I'm going to make another layer. Another layer, put it below my sketches and call that grid. There's a built-in grid that we can access or you'll often have to make your own. And so Consistency is, for example, designing your character so that it is, it is the equal height when it is forward to you 
It is the equal height when it is profiled to you. And it is the equal height when it is back to you. Right now I was doing it all freehand and the heights are not right. Okay, I'm gonna do a grid. I'm locking all my layers except the grid. I'm choosing another color. Uh, with the line tool, draw some simple lines with maybe a green color. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line in the center of the um, of the canvas. Is that the center there? Is that the center there? Well, okay, now I need to figure out the center of my of my canvas. View rulers. So I can start to actually see some lines for consistency. That's up on the view menu, rulers, with the line tool. I'm going to go like size 10 on that. Divide this into three lines like this horizontally. If you want to get exactly perfect, we need to do a little math. Do the math for us right here. The vertical of this project is 1080, right? 1920 wide, 1080 tall, 1080 divided by four, 270. So my first line, I'll do it right in a moment, but my first line will be at 270. Okay, 270 plus 270, 540. So I'm gonna find 540 in a moment. And then 240, uh, I mean, five, 540 plus 270, 810. So mathematically, I can find the exact lines, and I'll do it right in a moment. I did it wrong. But math sometimes is valuable for art. Like I want to divide this into four sections. One, two, three, four. It's three lines. I want them at equal distances. So a little math. Now, there's also a shortcut that I'll show in a moment. But the math was that I took the total height divided by four. That gives me one unit, first line, then add another unit, second line, add another unit, third line, 270s. Um, I can find the exact uh, X and Y coordinates on the window menu, info, window info. Your panel, so you can see exactly where you're at. So up and down is the y axis, left and right is x. So I need to find 270 from the top. So if I scroll down my mouse to 300, 274, 269, 271, so close. But it depends on your zoom as well. If the more you're zoomed in, the more accurate it is. The more you zoom out, the less accurate it is. I'm going to get it as close to 270 as possible. And I'll start at the I'll start at the edge of the outside. I'll go from outside to outside. Instead of being exactly inside of the canvas and then you miss it, start from the outside. So I'm finding 270. If the panel keeps hiding itself, you can grab it and pull it out. 270. 271.9. Close enough. And then I'm going to pull it out to the side here. If you're if the angle is not being perfectly straight, you can hold shift. That'll keep it perfectly straight. 270. This one was at 540. So 270, 540, 810. 540. 41.3, close enough. Stretch that out there. And the final one is 810. Of course, I'll show you a way to do it exactly perfectly in a moment. But here we go. We've got the three lines. 
evenly spaced out. Doing this on my grid layer. So that was the hard way. I did a little math. Um, you the info panel to put it exactly perfect. Show you the shortcut cheat way. Let's say I wasn't quite on the right spots. Say I wasn't on the quite quite right spots. We have a command in animate that will automatically align things for you. So we're spending a bunch of time just on making grids, not even drawing yet. But yeah, sometimes this stuff is very helpful just to even set yourself up. So let's say I need these three lines exactly equal distance. Instead of going to the math and checking the XY right here, you can do this. You can select all three of those lines. There's a panel on the side over here that looks like a little kind of a chart thing, like a stock market or something. This is the align panel. You can also find it up on window align. Align. Let's pull it out if you want. Align will let you line things up perfectly mathematically. Let the computer do it for me. You have a whole bunch of them. Align left edge, center right edge. So if I were to select, do it this way. Let's say, you see how those three lines there are clearly not aligned properly. All right, we'll align them all in the center. They all center to each other. Based on the things you've selected and you start to click these alignments, they will align to each other. Now they're all perfectly centered to each other. I want them centered on my on my drawing board. Well, here it is, aligned to stage. If I undo that, I've got my three lines selected. If I select align to stage, center, align horizontal center, they get aligned perfectly centered. It does the math for you perfectly on the screen there. Um, this one here, align vertical, doesn't do what you want. They all now perfectly align right in the center. Don't do that one unless you want that. But aligning to stage or aligning to each other could be very valuable. Tribute. This is the one that will create the equal distances and such. Let's say these three lines that I drew here. So we have top line, bottom line, middle line. And I want that middle line exactly centered between the two top lines. I select all my lines and I turn off a line to stage, distribute to the center. It automatically calculated the perfect center point of that line based on the two top lines. Now, obviously, if my top line is down over here somewhere, select all of these and then I distribute. Okay, that center one is now perfectly spaced between the top and the bottom. But I want them to be spaced perfectly on the whole stage. So of course we've got align to stage, distribute, to put it perfectly on the top, bottom and middle. So with these different, different, um, selections of distributing, of aligning, um, matching size and such, all of these can be perfectly mathematically placed where they need to be. So depending on what you're trying to do, those alignments could be very useful. All right, so all of that was to make some lines here um, as a grid. Um, you often have to define your own grid, your own lines and so forth. But the point of this is now this will help me draw my characters consistently. 
because now I have a space near the bottom where the feet should usually be at. And I have a space near the top where the head should usually be at. And then I have a space in the center where the main stomach area should usually be at. And obviously I can divide this up even more if I want. But the point of that is that I've made a grid for myself, lines for myself as a as a uh, guide guideposts. I did that all in the grid layer. I'm going to lock that and go back to my sketch layer. So now, if I know that the head of my character, body, legs, arms, That is then helping me so that when I uh, draw the profile of the character, see that in this particular case, this is as, as low as the legs are going to go, the, the body's going to go before I get to the legs. There. Getting my idea here. So approximately there is where my shoulders start. So I should be starting it more up here, doing it too low. It's just a stick figure, but do you see that even if I follow consistency um, with a stick figure, I can, um, it can be very helpful. We are in three dimensions in a way, so also make some lines like that to consider it's the it's the profile view or three quarter view. You can just take that and flip it. Sure, cheat if you want, but practice instead. And at this point also. This is for um, basic sketch so that I can the basic sketch so that I can uh, then draw on top of it. I can be as complex as I want. Uh, let's see, before I delete that, let's say I make another layer and hide that layer. What if I want to draw in a more complex, you know, another way to, to create a stick figure character is that you have sort of like triangles as well. Upper body, lower body, legs. basically in triangles, this assumes you are um, humanoid character. So I'm doing all of this in triangles. Human body can be simplified to triangles to some degree. I'm starting to see that way, that arm's way too big compared to the other line, right? The grid. obviously easier with pen. It's all triangles there. Except for the head. And compared to just the basic stick figure there, this character that way. So I have to do the same sort of idea that Okay, the head starts over there, triangle. Too low.
side very simplified shapes like this you might not really see a lot of the difference um I not see a lot of a difference in the um what's front what's back and such this is just a starting point so that then you start to fill in the details here upper body I do want to try to follow those those grids as much as possible. That's what they're there for. Something like that. So I uh, still need to tweak it a little bit maybe, but uh, see how those are kind of following enough there that the bottom part of the body lines up with that line there. The shoulders pretty close there. So just plain old stick figures versus a little bit more defined triangular characters. This is definitely where you would go on, go to YouTube or go to Google and look up techniques for drawing characters, techniques for anime style characters, techniques for Disney style characters, techniques for um, you know JRPG style characters. Style characters is what I'm getting at. There's all of these styles, you know, when we did the, um, when we did on part one, when we looked at those commercials, not commercials, we looked at the uh, intros, we looked at the intros of cartoons, what did we look at? We looked at Middle, My Little Pony, we looked at Ben 10, DuckTales, right? Um, we looked at those various shows, Thundercats, we looked at those various shows, they have a style, the characters in Thundercats don't look like the characters on DuckTales, so um, looking up examples on YouTube, on regular websites. But then the next level up, okay, I'm going up to the finished la layer. On the finished layer, based on what I've started here, I, I need to then start to fill in the details. And as usual on, on all of these assignments, you're gonna do it little by little by little. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. You can add to it as time goes on. I know a lot of us are perfectionists with our art, but little by little we get there. I'm gonna to switch to another color on the finished layer because um, you can always change these colors later, but something that contrasts versus the red of the sketchy lines, go maybe with a blue, change any dimensions and so forth of my brushes I can. And so at this point, Here's maybe where I want to focus on my drawings. I don't need all those extra panels getting in my way. Here's where I can press F4 on the keyboard. That'll hide all your panels temporarily. And especially if you select the zoom of fit in window, it'll automatically zoom in and out to fit onto the size of your screen there. If you had set it to like 25%, you turn your panels on and off, that does nothing. If you set it to fit in window, and then when you F4 to hide your panels, you uh, see more of a drawing surface. So here, um, draw like a Bugs Bunny type of character as I personally usually do. Uh, so kind of figuring out that there's going to be, you can even refine it even more about um, further layers where the stick figure started off and then, well, that's going to be that. It's going to be this sort of round head 
snout area, nose. Maybe we'll do a cat character. Ears are going to go there somewhere. Shoulders, arms. Ready. Legs. So even though I named it finished, I'm still figuring out what I want to do with that character, and I can turn layers on and off temporarily. So maybe I'll maybe it's still sketchy. Maybe it's still not finished, but maybe I'll name that layer. Okay, uh, I had sketch, and I'll call it sketch two. And then on sketch two, I'll refine it a little bit more. But I'm still kind of going by the. Um, Original sketches. I got my finger ready on the undo button over there. I look pretty awkward here, but it gets the job done in my case. It's a cat character, little cat paws, cat feet, cat tail. Get back to that one later. But here I have, oops, uh, here I have spontaneously made another layer. I made the executive decision at that point. I need, I need a little bit more sketch before I get the final character. So looks like that. Oh, front side. Well, now I'm figuring out that the, um, the ears. This high up here. So I need to make sure that the ears are that high or so. With a round head somewhat, cheeks, nose, out ears. So eyebrows, all of those details. This sketch of it all. All the hair tufts and such at a certain point. See, as usual, like back on part one, it's just going to be a lot of you working, working on your projects. That undo button a lot. So I have knees here, and I'm not drawing knees there. So, okay, I got to go back. It's kind of on this one over here, kind of like a smaller body. But I was going too realistic, maybe, on the top one over there. Backside, same idea. Let's see, this got a round head, got those 
Netflix News. Back of the body. Legs. Tail. There's that sketchy view. Finished is never finished. So I'm not going to go through every step here, but you see the point of this at the moment. Um, I started with plain old stick figures. I went up to a little bit more of a triangular shapes. Um, then uh, another layer of sketchiness. And then I'm going to make another layer. See how I'm also changing my colors. Well, that original starting was red. Then so that I can see my lines, I then drew with another color. That I drew with another color. Make the next layer. Maybe the next layer will be finished. That's where I'm going to zoom in a lot. That's where I'm going to draw every little part of it perfectly. So lock that layer, new layer. Name these layers meaningfully later but this is often the artistic process. And so I need another color. Uh, I can go back to red because I, I'm not gonna view that layer there, but I can go red here so I can see what's on top of that layer. And in this case, um, I think I do want to do the zoom in that far, 231% for me. And in that case, I can, um, Be at a better place. Oops. Be at a better place for um, drawings. have the hand ready on the undo, or you can program it onto these tablets. So at that point, then I'll fix those details later, but here now it's getting more refined. Tune eyebrows, tune eyes. Right, so that's coming together like that. Um, I might, after I go through one round of all of that, further refining it, then I would go in and start to clean up these lines, of course, where these don't touch, where there's missing and so forth. But um, let's do this for a moment. Draw a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but let's say I'm, I'm going to drop to this point for a moment, then I'll show you some techniques to refine this and color it uh, with new ideas like shading and uh, gradients and such in a moment. So let's draw for a little bit. Um, let's, we're also getting to a break time. So um, draw for a bit if you feel you're at a good kind of stopping point like this, uh, take a break. It's 1.50, we'll take a break until two. Uh, and then like at 2.02, 2.05 or so, then I'll show you, okay, 
what would I do on the next step here? I really like this, and I want to refine that and then color it. Um, so let's do a little drawing and a little break. And at 2.05, go on. Pause on the recording to not waste time there. And I just need to be reminded to return it back on. So we'll be back. All right, let's continue here. So I started off as a stick figure, went up to more of a defined triangles, then sketch version one there, and then the more finished one. This is the part about the perfectionism that we do have these time limits. And my perfectionism, however, tells me that I need to fix a variety of things there. So you do have to balance perfectionism with time limits. But for here, I want to show you about working with the um, with this point of the graphic, uh, like for coloring and other things. Uh, we touched on this a little bit on part one, but I really want to focus on it, how useful this is. So let's say I've got this part of the drawing so far. I want to refine a few things. For example, there's a few parts where the lines are not touching. Remember, all lines need to touch if you want to fill in colors, although there's some advanced techniques we'll look at where you don't need a line. We'll get to that. And then other parts that need to be refined. So here's a technique that I really like. This, uh, depending how you've made your drawings, I use the brush tool. This is similar over on the line tool. Uh, but the point is that wherever you've got a line that you draw with the brush tool, Animate sees it as a mathematical equation. And it sees that there is an edge over here and an edge over here. So these lines that, that I drew over here, this one line that I drew is actually made up of a bunch of these pieces of lines. Look at that. I started off with a line and now I'm making a, a blob or whatever. Well, wherever you have lines intersecting with each other, they have this behavior of, okay, I'm, I'm moving the line over here, but when I move it further this far over here, it cuts it. So now that's a separate piece over here, and that's a separate piece over here. So where you have, wherever you have lines overlapping, things happen. If I bring these two together like this, they're the same color. They will merge. It's one thing. And wherever you have hard edges, basically, and you overlap them, they make a cut. Knowing that, I can make some refinements here because I can get the eraser tool and just start erasing. But I personally like this. That gives you this lot of control. Uh, in this case, I've got the ear overlapping with the eyebrow. And so if I grab a corner or I grab a curve and then overlap it like this, well, I've continued the nice smooth curve and I have this leftover piece that I can just select and delete. I'm doing all of this with the select tool now. I drew it with the brush tool and now I'm going in and either pulling this, this corner edge on top of that corner edge that might cut it might overlap a curve upon a spot that will cut it. And if I've got the uh, magnet on or off, that may or may not help the snap object. Oftentimes, I don't think it helps. So the magnet is on. And what I'm seeing is when I move these lines, they're kind of snapping into place a little bit mechanically. I may want that. Usually, I don't think you do. And that snappiness is happening because of this magnet. So on the select tool, I've turned off the magnet. And now I can move these lines exactly where I want. So the point here is I'm going to overlap lines to clean up lines. Like over here. I just fix that. There's a part over here that I don't like that overlap. So from the it's usually from the opposite side. If I want to fix it down here, I, I fix it on the opposite side. So I can grab it from the top part over here and drag it down here. 
that's overlapped it. And then I delete any leftover pieces if there are leftover pieces. There's parts of the circle of the eye over here. I would rather have it end over here somewhere like that. That's too much of a corner. I might have to, again, just kind of push and pull. It isn't closed over here, so I'll pull. I could draw it. I can get the brush tool and pull and draw it, or I can pull lines that are already there. Like there's a there's a line over here. If I try to fill in color, it's going to fill into the eye. So that needs to be complete. So I'll just pull it. If I pull it past, it'll do something weird like that. But if I pull it far enough so that it touches, same color connects. Overlap them, that's when they cut. But if I pull this line from the nose all the way up like that, will I cut out all that area there? Do I have to stress so far that there's a that there's a line right here? And there was a line right here, and there's a little bump there. That's up to you. I would say no, however, because when you look at these at the normal dimensions, you're not going to see every little thing. You know there's imperfections there. It shouldn't matter at a certain point. Um, the big imperfections, yeah, fix those. But the little ones, like, you know, those seven pixels that are wrong there, am I going to stress that? I wouldn't. You have plenty more things to worry about. Over here, I have the, the mouth. Technically, this mouth with, like, six pixels is connecting with the nose. I may or may not want that. So that's where I can kind of play around with overlapping these to kind of cut these shapes out. In this case, there's a little bit of a hard edge here. It's just a matter of playing with it, pushing it, and pulling it to the right place. minor thing that you wouldn't have noticed unless I mentioned it that used to be connected now no longer is that what I want maybe do I want to undo that do it over I don't know maybe it's all a lot of the artistry of what you want to do let's say right here the bottom the chin of the mouth is touching the bottom of the neck area do I want that do I want a separation if I try to get the eraser it's it's going to be it's not it's not going to be as um finessed as you, as you want, maybe, if you use the instead this technique that I'm talking about here of the selection tool and then pulling these lines. Sometimes you have to do it more than one way. I'm going to pull it out this far. Then on the opposite side, I'm going to pull it out this far. I managed to separate that line. It is something to practice. It's it's just a weird this drawing tool. is one of my favorites, Adobe Animate, but it's got really weird properties. So there, spending that amount of time on that. Uh, the more important part is over here. There's no connections there. There's eyebrow, there's the head, then there's the ear. Well, these should be maybe, okay, uh, in this case, maybe I'll just do a big old cut it, cut like that. Drag the part of the head up here somewhere. Eyebrow, and then fix the ear. That is that better or worse than drawing the line, undoing it, and drawing it again? Maybe. Is it better or worse than erasing it? Maybe it's going to be what you feel works, what you are comfortable with, what results you're happy with. But I'm showing this technique of the malleability of the lines here. They can be molded, be molded. They don't have to be perfect on the first time. That's exactly what I'm doing here. They were very close to being perfect. But then now I'm going in and making the I wanted to drop in color right here. I couldn't. Color 
can be dropped here because it's a closed shape, closed shape. All of these are closed, but not the head because there's like eight pixels here that are not connected. It's closed, that's closed. Sometimes you want the, you want the style of open lines. Sometimes for the artistry of it, you do want artistic gaps in your art. I'm gonna be very obvious here. I don't actually want this, but let's say I, I want gaps in my in my art, but I cannot fill in the color, of course, because okay, that has no gaps and that has no gaps, but obviously this has gaps. Here's a way where you can uh, do a pretty advanced coloring and keep gaps. Um, you just have to use the opposite drawing tool. I used a brush tool to start my lines. What's the opposite of the brush? The line tool. The line tool that makes the perfect straight lines versus the brush that makes curvy lines. They are opposites. They don't interact. The point is, I can make lines. I can draw lines on top of lines that don't connect but they connect enough so that I can fill in a color. It's kind of hard to explain, so let me show you. I'm going to, with some other color so that it's obvious, I'm going to make a line um, right here. This is the line tool. I switched to the line tool. I'm gonna to do a very small line just to be obvious. Uh, it's one pixel, let's say. But I have a, I have a line right there a line uh, maybe right here and a line over here. That has closed my shape, but has not altered the technique that I'm trying to do. The technique is I'm going to fill in color right here. So let's do here. So I have filled in the color. There's these big gaps because the line tool has closed the gap. With the selection tool, I can double click the line, delete, double click, delete, double click, delete. The line tool does not combine with the brush tool and the brush tool does not combine with the line tool, but they can work together to close a shape. And so you see I'm getting this effect where brush it would not have allowed me to to fill in those colors and it would not have allowed me to fill in those colors um because the the lines are broken you can clearly see there i didn't finish those lines in a few places i'm going to find the right color that's visible on the projector here so even though there's gaps in there well i i temporarily used the line tool to close those gaps and because this software is really cool, I can still go in and say, okay, I don't want that color at all. Delete it. It doesn't affect the other lines. I can go back to the line tool, maybe be a little bit more specific right here and right here and right here. Fill in with color. Select, double click those lines with the line tool. Careful that you don't double double click the brush tool and then if you delete oops you deleted the brush line I'm deleting the line double click that delete that so you see i i have i have that effect where the the line the brush lines don't have to connect if you also use the line tool temporarily to make connected shapes to then fill in the color i'm looking at it at the regular 100% well i'm getting this effect of the uh incomplete lines that I might have wanted. Right? If I if I didn't want these lines to be all connected like this, I could do what I just showed you. Don't want those brush lines connect completed. I could um Line tool.
my case, I do want those lines. So I can even bring them back what I previously deleted. Overlap them. This drawing tool is very interesting. You'll be animate. That's it's completed for me to fill in the colors. One reason, again, I said uh, put your background as gray so that you can see where you need to fill in colors. If I had left my background as white, it makes me think that when I complete it, that, uh, that yep, I filled in the colors of the eyeballs, white eye, white eyeballs. But then if um, when it animates and so forth um, and it moves in front of something, oops. That color was never filled in. It's transparent. That's why I have the stage at some other color besides white, uh, besides white, so that I know that I need to fill in colors there. White tufts of cheeks, white eyeballs. Black, you really, you don't want to go with pure black. You want to go to very dark, dark gray. Um, on its own, that looks pretty black, but it's not full black. Because um, when you do your shading and such, you, um, something that's pure black, uh, conflict with other parts of the drawing. In my case, there's a little piece here that didn't get colorized. I left mine with the original red lines. If I wanted those to be black like normal drawings, if I wanted. Selection there, and then select the pure black line. This is again the artistry of it because if I, for the practice or the comparison, I have a, uh, if I let my colors as uh, the original red like that versus black, this is a very subtle difference. One is not better than the other. So look at that. Tell me what you like there, the one on the left or the one on the right. Tell me in the chat which of those two do you like a little better? The one with some kind of color, reddish on the left or full black on the right? There's no wrong answer, but I kind of like the red one on the left more than the one on black. Black is normal color, but choosing that red that I didn't even plan on, but that red contrasts well for this character. Not every character and every color combination is going to work. But on this cartoon cat character, I think having reds there with orange and pink works a little better than black lines. So I did that very easily, very quickly. I selected the whole thing. I did a copy. I did a paste. That gave me a complete copy of it, and then I could just start to make changes to the copy. Part of the reason also about, I, I said here, like in the pupils, I didn't make them pure black, because if I did want to change the, the color of the lines, okay, it's only changing the lines because they were pure black, but not the pupils. If they were pure black, the pupils would have also filled black. And it would have been hard to change the color of the inside and the outside of the eye because they were the same color, and then it's harder to separate them. All right, so 
we're getting to the end of the day of today's lecture. So we'll end here. Uh, we still have more to learn. So we're going to be back on Wednesday, where I want to talk about some more advanced coloring methods, um, um, like gradients. We saw flat coloring or cell shading back on part one. We'll review that briefly, and then we'll look at gradient colors so that it looks much more three-dimensional. We'll cover that on Wednesday. We'll continue with this with this um, project on Wednesday. So again, if you were if you did not take part one, you want to go to Canvas and review the lectures that are there because I am skipping a lot about what the tools do. We learned that all back on part one. In part one, you can access it all there on the CIS 125 playlist on resources week one. And when we come back on Wednesday, we'll learn some more things. That'll then take us to the first homework, the model sheet. So we'll end the lecture at this point.